Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, TPW, a collaborative approach to Indigenous exchange. My name is Morgan Flanagan, and I'm the coordinator of events and special initiatives here at the BC Council for International Education. Thank you very much for joining us today in what I hope will be an informative session on Indigenous exchanges. Before we get started, it's important to acknowledge that at BCCIE, we live and work on the unceded traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. Now, before we begin, I'll move on to a few housekeeping items. I know we're all familiar with Zoom, but as a reminder, please use the Q&A function to send your questions or if you have any comments. If you need any technical assistance during the webinar, please use the chat box and we'll help answer your inquiry. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce today's speakers. Firstly, we have Faye Alikani, Global Engagement Advisor at the University of British Columbia, Christy Pittman, UBC student in the Outdoor Environmental Education Program, Karima Pewairangi, Project Manager, Office of Maori Development at the University of Otago, and Flynn Rosie, University of Otago student in International Business Studies. Over to you all. Thank you, Morgan. I'm just gonna share my screen now. And does that look good? All right. Um, so hi, everyone. Um, I First of all, I want to say thank you to BCCIE for inviting us today to share about this special program. My name is Faye Alikani. I'm a global engagement advisor in the Go Global office at the University of British Columbia. Um, I came to Coast Salish Territories as a settler in 2001. My family is from Thailand on my mother's side and Afghanistan on my father's side. I gratefully acknowledge that I'm joining you today from the traditional ancestral and unceded lands of the Stalo, Wasainich, Kwantlen, Semiamu, and Tawasin First Nations. I am representing UBC's Vancouver campus and I pay my respects to the Hunkanean speaking Musqueam people on whose lands I work and learn. I also want to acknowledge the traditional caretakers of the lands that you are all joining from today. It's really an honor for me to work with my colleagues in Aotearoa on a project that connects Indigenous students across the globe with one another and the ancestral lands of the people um, that they visit. Um, I'd like uh, to give uh, the mic over to Christy for her introduction. Thank you, Bay. Uh, so I'll um, say my introduction in your aunt, how I was taught to introduce myself. Green. Van Pell, Essie Awak, Christine John, Nepset Chwail Awak, Kikitsat, Bucky John, Nechek Whale, Vivian Lewis, Nares Whale, Jerry Miss Kanak, Nemet Whale, Halo Mate Miss Kanak, Nemurm Whale, Spanu Miss Kanak, uh, Christy Pittman, Wiganoyak, Wek Nai Tahu Wish Galena, Walk Clown at Quigget, Foxy Saw. So I uh, said my name and then our territory's mm -hmm. name. So uh, in Yurok, I was taught we acknowledge our lands, like where we're coming from, and then our grandparents and parents, and I've added my partner, Jerry, and my two our two children in there. Um, I'm Yurok, where my poika comes from, from Northern California, where the big redwood trees grow, and on my late dad's side, Schlatlinch, uh, so from the interior portion of BC. And I'm really happy to be here and just feel blessed to be able to bring my family on this journey. And apologies because I can't remember who is next speaking. Um, Faye, can you let us, was it Karamia? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Kei aku nui, kei aku rahi, kei aku whakatamarahi ki te rangi, aku whakateitei ki te whenua, te nga koutou. Uh, nei rā te reo mihi, uh, mai i ngā whenua o Aotearoa, uh, te pito whenua o Otākau, o Kātihui Rapa, uh, ki puke te raki, o Moiraki, 
um, te nei rā te, te whakamana wa, uh, i ngā mana whenua o tēnei takiwa. Um, me te tuku hoki i ngā mihi kia koutou, kua au mai ki runga ki tēnei hui topa. Uh, I tēnei ahiahi o te rā i tēnei ata. Uh, ai, nei rā ngā whakamana wa kia koutou katoa. Um, kia ora everybody. Um, as with great honour that I um, acknowledge um, all of you who have joined us um, in Canada um, and and greet you from uh, Aotearoa. Um, here we are located um, in Otako, um, in the lands of Otako uh, of Katihuira Pakipuke Te Raki uh, and Moiraki, um, where the University of Otago um, is situated on. Um, yeah, my name is uh, Karamea Pewhairangi. Um, I work in the Office of Māori Development at the University of Otago. And um, I guess a little bit about me. I am a, a product of the Māori language um, petition, which is a petition that was signed um, over 50 years ago that allowed for the Māori language to be taught in schools. Um, but it is something that uh, I'm I'm passionate about, um, mostly because uh, my language uh, is something that my parents can't speak, and so I um, see myself as an advocate for that space, <clears throat> and that um, guides me in all of the work that I do um, in the at the university. Um, yeah, and so we'll get into a bit more of introductions and about who we are, but I would like to pass it over to um, Tiflin. Tēnā tātou, e mihi ana. Pakaati tēnā rā tātou katoa, kia ora karamia. Uh, Pēnei te mihi a karamia kia koutou katoa ki kānata um, ki Aotearoa. Uh, rā nei, um, ai, e mihi kau ana kia koutou, uh, kia koutou mahi, kia koutou manakitanga, kia koutou um, mana ki tā whina uh, ki ki te, um, ki te tautoko i te apōpō o tā tātou um, tauira, um, ki te tangata takitaki o kānata, um, ai mihi kauana tēnā rā tātou mō tātou manākitanga i te wā o toku um, noho noho tanga ki reira. Um, ko waiau, um, huri tēnei te mahi a te marae o hokianga, um, ngari tauira o, o tākou whakihuaka, uh, ko Flynn Rosie tōku ingoa. So kia ora te whānau, kia ora everyone. My name's Flynn Rosie. I'm a fifth year student at Otago University. Um, and I'm, um, yeah, the great pleasure of just um, returning back from the University of British Columbia. An amazing time there. And yeah, forgive me for what I'm wearing. I'm currently at Mahi at work um, in Queenstown. So we're on our break in between um, our semesters. But yeah, very happy to be here. Uh, awesome to be alongside some great panelists and I uh, can't wait to hear questions and everything. So, ano, um, tēnā rā tātou katoa, kia ora. Okay, thank you all. Um, so, uh, our program today, um, Karamea is going to take us through the uh, development of the TPW program. Um, and then I will share a little bit about um, the University of British Columbia's experience um, joining them as a partner on this program and then we'll hear um, student reflections from both Christy and Flynn and there'll be time for questions and answers hopefully we have a lot of content to go through so I'll pass it right over to Karamia. Right. <clears throat> um, yeah so just to provide a little bit of context um, and a bit more of an introduction um, I come from four, four tribes in, in New Zealand um, the first one is located uh, on the east coast at the, I like to call it the the fin of the of the fish, uh, which is Ngāti Poro, <clears throat> and then down towards the the head of the fish we have Ngāti Kahumunu Ki Wairarapa. Um, right up the top, um, in the the tail of the fish, is Ngāpuhi, uh, and then. 70% or 80% of the of the South Island is, is Ngaitahu. Um, I'm an alumni of, of the University of Otago, did um, Indigenous Development and Commerce, and currently work as a 
uh, project manager at the Office of Māori Development. Apply. So um, just to provide a little bit of background around the, the Tūranga YY Pōkai Whenua program. Um, so Te Tiri Te O Waitangi is New Zealand's founding document. Um, it was uh, signed in 1840. In this document, it sets out very clearly in three articles uh, the terms of the relationship between tangata whenua, uh, people of the land, and the British Crown. So all institutions in New Zealand have made commitments to uphold Te Tiri Te in every aspect of their work. Um, and the Office of Māori Development was established in 2007 as a key administrative entity supporting the university's implementation of Te Tiriti partnerships. The blueprint that guides this mahi is, or this work, is the Māori Strategic Framework, uh, a comprehensive set of strategies guiding leadership and partnership, Māori research, quality programs and teaching, uh, te reo, which is the Māori language, tikanga Māori, Māori customs, Māori student success, and Māori staff growth and development. Therefore, the programme we will talk about today is a part of the University of Otago's efforts to support goal number five of the Māori strategic framework, which is Māori student success. And so just to provide a little bit of an introduction to the TPW programme, uh, Tūranga YY Pōkai Whenua is a unique student exchange program built on face-to-face -face relationships established between Māori and Indigenous communities. The program is overseen by the University of Otago's Office of Māori Development in conjunction with the International Student Exchange Office. This program offers Māori, this program offers Māori students an opportunity to study for a semester at one of our partner universities abroad, who have strong links with their ind local Indigenous communities. In return, the partner university sends their Indigenous students to study at Otago. The, arrange the arrangement is structured like a regular exchange with fees paid to the home university and credit earned at the partner university recognised by the home university. So the international, um, international exchange at Otago um, is run out of the international office, and they send and receive around 250 students per annum um, to more than 100 partners worldwide. While ethnicity is not specifically recorded on application, it has been estimated that the number of Māori students applying each year has remained static in the six to eight range, or six to eight percent range. Similarly, there is no evidence of Indigenous students coming from exchange partners outside of TPW in the, um, yeah, outside of TPW in the annual inbound intake. And if there were, there was little organised in the way of contact with local Māori community or on campus. The idea of, a, um, of this exchange programme designed for Indigenous uh, students sprang from the identification of these opportunity gaps. Therefore, we look at, um, to begin, the university had to identify why the standard model was not attracting Māori students. So first and foremost, we have the relevance. So from a student point of view, the regular programme was often see, seen as irrelevant to Māori. Even though courses dealing with identity and Indigenous politics were available at many um, universities, what was missing is a component that acknowledges the Indigenous way of seeing, of learning, of being of in the world where Indigenous cultures are being exchanged for not only the benefit of the student, but also their community. Therefore, we have designed a program that com um, comprises an immersive, um, immersive commu community to community knowledge exchange involving face-to-face -face interactions uh, with the Indigenous people of the area. Um, Another um, another one of the barriers was that students had concerns around um, being far from home and separated from those closest to them. And um, on top of that is there's various com commitments that students may have within the community. 
Uh, one thing to note about Otago, 70% of our Māori student popula population come from outside of the Otago area. Um, so coming to the South Island can be a culture shock. Going to university can be a culture, sh culture shock. Therefore, going on, on exchange is often unimaginable. To mitigate this, um, we allow students to go in peers, or in Christie's case, we will look to support us support um, families to go as well. Um, indigenous, so in terms of student support, Indigenous students have the same access as Māori, Māori students when studying at the University of, of Otago. Um, and student support is something that um, we need to have a wraparound support around um, Indigenous students. And so that was one of the, the concerns is we need to ensure that the partners that we have and that we ourselves as the University of Otago can maintain and uh, can support those students. And finally, um, the other barrier that was identified was many Māori, uh, was financial issues or costs relating to um, exchange programs. So many Māori families do not have the ability to provide um, costs for an exchange abroad, even where um, some financial support is available. So therefore, uh, we provide a $10,000 scholarship to offset cost of going on exchange, and the international office also provide all students a $1,000 travel grant. Kapai. So how do we create partnerships and how do we kind of figure out um, where our students should go? Um, firstly, I, I think um, one of the, the things about COVID-19 for the TPW program is that it put a stop to, to the program. Um, we launched this program in 2018 and when COVID, um, then we were kind of in the development stage of the program. And um, when COVID happened and when I joined, joined the team in 2021, or at the end of 2021, um, those who were leading the TPW program were no longer working in the Office of Māori Development. This meant that we had to start from scratch in terms of our partnerships. We had to rekindle those relationships. And because relationships is a key aspect of this program, um, we couldn't, we can't just sign MOUs or um, sign documents. We have to uh, create that um, intimate relationship with the people and the partners that we have. Um, and so COVID-19 for us was a big, um, big learning. Um, and it, but it also meant that we um, had to rekindle a lot of those, those relationships. But um, going on from that, to help us lead us in that process, um, we maintain the idea of um, sticking to our values. And so values, these, these Māori concepts are, are different types of values that we hold within Te Ao Māori. So the first one is manakitanga, which is hospitality. So um, knowing that we we have the resources or have the ability to take care of Indigenous students when they come. Uh, kaitiakitanga, which is guardianship of land, but also resources. Um, knowing that when we wherever we go, uh, we are not of of those things, but we're there to to um, to protect um, and to to restore and to um, to share with others. Um, and that, that could come in the form of um, also learnings that we have. And then the last one is Utu. So Utu is reciprocity. Um, and it's um, taking care of students and giving them the, um, uh, the learnings and um, the knowledge that um, will be passed on uh, to their communities, but also knowing that in doing so, we know that our students will receive the same. So it's that kind of recipro reciprocity. Um, and it's also the reciprocity knowing that what you learn um, as a student will also be passed down to um, your children, their children. Um, and so it's a, it's a generational 
um, concept. So the key aspects is the key aspect to the TBW program is the relationships that the, the institution has with the people of the land in which the institution is situated on, and that the student will be guided to engage with those communities. This involves an indigenous to indigenous approach. Popeyes, just touch on a, some um, student support that we have at the University of Otago. Um, and Kurohata, Hata te, Kurohata Temo is a, um, he's a kaitohutomi Māori, which is our, he's a kaumatua, so which is an elder. Um, he works within the Office of Māori Development and, yeah, he's our expert. He um, he guides us in, in everything that we do um, out inside, within TPW, but also outside TPW. Um, I, I would say that the University of Otago would be lost without him. Um, he provides pastoral care to students, um, spiritual guidance through, through prayers. Um, he takes the time to provide advice, but also takes students off campus. One thing to know about Kurohata is he loves his food, um, or Māori food. So he he loves to go fishing, he loves to go hunting. Um, he holds all of the knowledge pertaining to all of those things and how to preserve. Yeah, preserve. <laughs> um, and yeah. I love this guy. Um, student support. So we, we also have Tehuka Mātauraka, which is the Māori centre. And you might see in the photo that Flynn's, um, Flynn's in there because he used to work at um, Tehuka Mātauraka. But um, this this support centre is an ex expert group of Māori staff. Um, they provide Māori counsellors, they have Māori chaplains, they have mentoring programs where you appeared with a um with a um older student to kind of guide you through um some of the courses that you might be doing that they've already done. Uh, they have the academic program where you get extra tutorials. Um, and then they also run the um the welcome ceremony at the, the start of the year. Um yeah. And then we also have Te Roku Māori, which is the Māori Students Association. Um, they have a student space on campus, which is run by them, it's for them. Um, anyone can go there. Um, they also provide, they are the student voice or the Māori student voice um, for students and on university um, committees. Um, so, yeah, they, they provide that kind of... Um, peer-to-peer -peer support. Um, they have social events, social sports, um, kapaka, which is Māori performing, performing arts, and they also provide study initiatives. Um, accommodation, which is, oh, sorry. So just, just on student support, one of the things to note is Indigenous students who come to the University of Otago um, have the same access to as Māori students. Um, when it comes to student support. So anything that Māori students can access, our Indigenous students on the TBW program can access. So accommodation, um, all international students stay in university flats. Um, they are fully furnished, fully equipped with everything that you need. Um, they most um, uh, university flats come with a Kiwi host. Um, and they are a walking distance to, to campus. Cool. So I guess um, when I reflect on the program in the, the past through past few years that we've um, that we have done this program, some of the things that we have worked well um, is our relationships. And I think as the Office of Māori Development, it's it's very important for us and for Māori to be leading this programme. Um, I find value in in the way that students uh, feel comfortable to just pop by our office, um, to sit down and have lunch with us, um, to kind of share, um, share anything that, that um, is happening or any support that they might need. Um, and that I find 
you know, value and being um being unapologetically Māori where it's um where you see and see the value in students kind of engaging with you. So um our relationships with the students I think has worked well. Um but also our relationships with our partners. Um we are very we we need to be very particular on who we partner with. Um and it needs to be on that reciprocal basis in their face-to-face um, um, context. So those are some of the things that haven't uh, that have worked well for us, I believe. Um, and areas of improvement, I think there are many areas of, of improvement, um, especially uh, the number one, I would say, is resources. Um, although we have great student support, um, if we are, if we are, if this program is to grow and grow and grow, um, we need to challenge um, the university to resource this program better so that, um, you know, that area of support grows. Because um, at the moment, it's it's the Office of Mighty Development, it's those 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 um, support centres that I spoke of, but they also support all of the Mighty students. So. One one things um where we need to improve is is where we resource this program and um ensure that um that we maintain that level of support if this program does grow. Um yeah, so just to, in conclusion, um the Tūranga Wai Wai Pōkai Whenua program sits within our university um strategy. Um, in our vision to 2030 um, and it, as a way to expand um, and grow our Indigenous student numbers. Um, we, we are also looking um, in, a, in a space to where we are expanding our partnerships and TPW is also paving the way for other Indigenous opportunities at the University of Otago, which is, um, you know, we're expanding to looking at study abroad programs and um short um yeah short short courses that um have a uh, indigenous short courses as well so yeah i would say that the tpw program has set those foundations for the university of otago and and the way in which we engage in indigenous mobility you anyway, know that's me thank you very much kia ora. Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to share a little bit about how uh, UBC was invited to participate in this program. Um, I joined the Go Global office seven years ago in 2017. And at the time, our unit was reviewing the accessibility of our programs and considering how to increase participation from underrepresented students, um, in particular Indigenous students. So we were focused on three main factors that have played a role in student participation by consulting with academic advising offices and colleagues in the Indigenous Working Group on campus. Um, to provide better institutional support, we developed the role of a student advisor dedicated to Indigenous initiatives, um, and we increased staff presence at spaces where students gather, such as the First Nations Longhouse and the Indigenous Community Resource Fair, um, to share about international programs. To address some of the financial barriers, we developed a policy to waive our $400 application fee for Indigenous students to encourage them to apply without um, financial pressure. And we also applied for a number of funding opportunities to provide awards for Indigenous students to participate in programs. Then in 2018, we received a visit from Tuari Potiki, who was at the time um, the Director of Maori Development at the University of Otago, and Alison Finnegan, um, the Manager of International Student Services. They came to UBC to share a brand new Indigenous exchange initiative, um, and it became our first opportunity to provide students with an exchange program that was culturally relevant to Indigenous learners. 
So the funding model um, for the program was initially focused on housing. The cost of housing on campus for students was covered by each of the host institutions. Um, this was quite important for students coming to Vancouver because um, as many of you know who are joining from um, BC, the housing market here is intense and securing a place to stay um, is one of the biggest stressors of coming to a new place. I really think a big difference between what Otago offers is that they can place students in flats with Maori students, allowing them to connect with Indigenous students right away where they live. At UBC, we don't currently have a system that can pair students up in this way. So all exchange students usually end up in the same dormitories, meaning TPW students are likely to be staying with other international students. Um, and it requires a little more effort to connect with the Indigenous students on campus. Um, the first year of the program was unique. Um, we received our first student from Otago in January 2020. And just as he was settling in, the COVID-19 pandemic hit. So it was um, no sooner had he had arrived, but then students were being evacuated back to their home countries and the work of international education as I'm sure you all experienced, came to a pause. But during that pause, we had an opportunity to do um, some more groundwork um, as we waited for travel to open up again. Um, as Karamea noted, the program is based on face-to-face -face relationships. And Tuari's visit to campus in 2018 was a really pivotal moment for myself working on Indigenous programs. I always remember my first meeting with him as he was describing the goals of the program and what they hope to achieve, he said, we don't send people to places, we send people to people. And those words have had a huge impact on how I work in this space with the understanding that our relationships with one another are how we can make this program successful. So we need to know the people that we connect students with, whether it's on our campus or another. And the pandemic, um, it gave me an opportunity to connect with colleagues in a different way. So in between programs being started and canceled again and again, we actually had more time to get to know one another through Zoom socials. I'm sure nobody misses Zoom socials, but it, it's true. We did get to know one another through them, talking about our families and our pets, our hobbies, and the work that we do on campus. And in 2020, UBC launched its new Indigenous strategic plan and became the first university in North America to commit to implementing the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Over the course of the next year, our office worked on completing the ISP self-assessment and action-based toolkit. This process helped us to evaluate where our programs were at and also to strategize where we wanted to go. So when we were finally ready to relaunch TPW in um, 2022, I think we were much better ready to share all the resources that help support Indigenous student learning across campus. Um, I'll give a quick summary of the resources um, that we share with TPW students. First and foremost is the First Nations House um, of Learning, which is um, the First Nations Longhouse. Um, this is a welcoming space for Indigenous students to access services, socialize with one another, and study. Indigenous student lunches are hosted every week during the semester in the Great Hall, where students can enjoy a free meal together and also meet with El Elder Larry Grant, who attends every week. The Shutatuam um, Collegium is also located in the building and is a student-only um, space. Elder Grant has described the little, literal translation um, from Musqueam as making yourself comfortable in another space. The Collegium has beautiful study areas, a kitchen and shower room, and is often stocked with snacks. So Indigenous students have access to this private space by using their student cards. This space also hosts a variety of activities like beating circles, drum making workshops and special lectures, which are shared through the weekly um, talking stick newsletter. So I work with my colleagues at the Longhouse to add TPW students to the mailing list so they are aware of the weekly events um, and to give their student cards access to the Collegium. Um, also located in 
the Longhouse are Indigenous mental health counselors and support staff that students can drop in to see as needed. And um, while we uh, cannot match uh, students with Indigenous roommates, um, TPW students uh, do receive guaranteed housing on campus. Um, academically, students are encouraged to take courses in First Nations and Indigenous Studies and First Nations and Endangered Languages to learn about the contemporary realities and political concerns of Indigenous peoples in Canada and language conservation and revitalization. If they choose to take Musqueam language courses, they are taught at the Cultural Centre on the Musqueam Reserve and provide an opportunity for students to learn directly in community. We also encourage students to spend time at other Indigenous spaces on campus, including the Weewa Library, the Wixissum um, Garden at the UBC Farm, um, where students can engage with traditional plant knowledge and support food sovereignty. And the Indian Residential School History and Dialogue Center, which is featured in this photo, um, hosts wellness drop-ins with elders throughout the year. So since we launched the program again, we've had two students come through. Each student brings a different experience and gives us a new perspective on what is working and what needs to improve with the program. As we continue to reflect and revisit the program with each new cycle, one thing that I've considered a lot is um, that even though there are many resources for Indigenous students at UBC, it can be quite intimidating to access them. Um, so for our next student who will arrive in September, I plan to create a survey to ask them what kinds of activities they would like to do, how often they might want to go to the student lunches, and whether they would like someone to go with them or are happy to explore on their own. Um, I'm hoping that by identifying their goals early, we can, we can better facilitate the types of connections they want to make. Um, last September, Karamea and her colleagues came to visit UBC along with um, the Maori elder, uh, Koro Hata Temo, who was in the photo earlier, um, whom I also had the pleasure of meeting in 2019 when he visited before the first program launch. Um, the group shared a meal with Dylan, who was um, here on exchange from Otago in term one, and um, the students that we had selected to go to Otago in term two. And as we uh, sat around the table, um, it really felt like the vision that was shared with us was coming to life and the cycle of connection um, is, was being put into motion. But Dylan was here on exchange, meeting with Christy and Annalise, who would be on exchange in Otago the following term. Now they're in New Zealand and they'll have the opportunity to meet with Charlotte, who will be here in September, who will then meet Gabby at UBC, who's going to New Zealand in January. And it's just really special to see um, the circle of relationships continue. But in order to be able to do this, funding is critical. International opportunities are expensive. As Karamea said, finances play a huge barrier to Indigenous students who often have additional family and community responsibilities. When the program first started, we were covering the cost of housing for TPW students, which was roughly $6,000 per student. After securing a few different external funding sources, we changed this to an awards-based model where students receive a $10,000 award plus a $1,000 travel um, allowance, which they can use to cover whatever costs they want. Now that our external funding has come to an end, we have had to have conversations internally about how we will support this pro program moving forward. It's really important that offices consider how they will ensure Indigenous programs are sustainable. They should not be pilot programs that have an expiry date. The time that it takes to build the relationships between institutions, offices, communities, and students requires long-term investment. Um, lastly, I want to share this artwork by Kiritea Smith, which was presented to our office last year. It's a treasured piece that sits in our main office and reminds us of our special relationship with the University of Otago. Um, as she has written, a taniko is a traditional Maori art form typically seen attached to Maori clothing or adornments. 
this particular pattern used for um, this taniko uh, relates to education and in Maori is called arunui. The placement of multiple triangles within a larger triangle depicts the baskets of knowledge that was gathered by the Maori god of the forest, Tane Mahuta. The triangles alternate facing up and down, acknowledging the highs and lows to learning. It's both the highs and the lows that help us grow this program. And I'm delighted to pass it over to the students now to share their experiences. Thank you, Faye and Kermia. Um, so why I applied, uh, I, my name is Christy. I have a B.Ed. in education uh, from UBC. And so I'm working on my outdoor environmental ed diploma. Um, so just to gain knowledge, and I wanted my Fano, my family, to be able to um, know that there's more out there than our tribes and our uh, traditions that Indigenous people all over the world um, exist like we talk to them about, but to experience new lands and new Indigenous people, Maori people, the Maori lands, um, the Pacific, uh, people of the Pacific. So all these knowledges and then also make those connections uh, to our traditions too, to, re to recognize that we have similarities and differences um, within all our traditions. Uh, so that bigger picture right here is the ceremony of the new branding um, for the University of Otago, Otago Whaka'iku um, Waka. So being able to attend ceremonies like that is just an amazing experience. Um, and then also us being able to share our culture um, here. So there's a little picture of us. We went to this kid's school uh, and did some powwow dancing. Uh, we did some powwow dancing at a gathering Kermia and the Office of the Maori Development had. So it's been really an amazing experience um, getting to see the mountains, um, Araki, we sing about Araki in one of the Kapahaka songs. So paying respects and getting to appreciate Araki um, and thanking Araki for the um, teachings and the knowledge and that power. I wanted to get uh, the connection and the kids and Jerry so we could um, meet the mountain that is that that I'm singing about in the songs and where the song comes from uh and for the kids too because the kids are singing along uh in the one of the classes that I'm taking the Maori 108 um the Maori performing arts so that's the picture right there so next slide please Faye So what went well, uh, just made to feel welcome. Everybody, uh, Karamia was awesome, just taking us around. Everybody at the Maori um, office was amazing. Uh, the Maori, uh, the, the, sorry, I was called the TPW office, the Office of Maori Development, the um, students at the Te Rupu Maori, uh, so the Maori Students Association, they're awesome. Everybody was just so welcoming uh, with us. And then there's the two other students who've come over from Canada to Annalise and Mason. So we got to go to the Marai. Next slide, please, Faye. And so just friends who became Fano, there's Crystal right there and there's her son. So just being able to also um, connect with the the water. Water is a big connection for us. So connecting to the lakes and the um, oceans and getting to travel the lands and learning about the histories and where um, stories come from and where different um, people come from. Yeah, and just the staff, uh, the Indigenous staff, there's a couple Indigenous professors that I have, uh, Samoa and then a Maori professor and they're amazing wealth of knowledge, very strong female energy, just leaders in their field. So it's it's been a real blessing and my kids getting to go to school here and take and have a Te Reo Maori in their classroom, the the words and songs and in their classes, um, Maori studies is is like a, a foundation in their school. And so it's not the other way around. It's not the Western education 
is first uh, the Maori, they're learning about uh, different celebrations and they're learning uh, the words. So it's really um, a foundational piece. And so I want that something that was important for me to have the kids understand that our culture and other indigenous cultures are the foundation and not uh, the other way around. And so next slide, please. So some growth of the program, like Faye had said, we had talked about uh, just kind of pairing students up with other um, like visiting students with students who have been there and maybe like a group of students to take um, a student on like each month if there's different cultural events or different activities happening. If the student wants, just kind of um, let it happen organically, but also have like a set, you know, a set timeline, but also let things happen organically. But the timeline's nice because you have a backup so students don't feel isolated or alone. Um, because I know, like, I've been blessed to be able to bring my um, family over, but some students come by themselves or they come in pairs. And so sometimes um, that loneliness sets in. So just having like a backup, like a friendly face, um, just maintaining contacts and having like school um, lunches, like, with staff or maybe other um, friends that have similar interests or maybe the staff knows other students who have similar interest in business or science or different things like Maori students or indigenous like Musqueam students, different students um, and just kind of pulling those students in. So expanding um, circles and then funding, just making sure there's enough adequate funding um, if there's big, um, gatherings that students want to attend. Maybe there's a little additional funding because $10,000 does sound nice, but it's also um, doesn't go very far with food, flights, um, clothing, if you need to buy extra clothing, uh, transportation. And you'll see there's Koro took us out, as Keremia mentioned, he takes students off campus. So he took us, uh, we went to Moraki, we met some of his uh, friends and had a great barbecue. Next slide. So some more girls, um, there's Karami on the first day and she's taking us around, making us feel welcome. Um, but the just having an indigenous professor as a safe space in academia so that the students come in and they know, oh, I can go to this professor and I feel I feel seen and I heard, I'm feeling heard um, and incorporating indigenous knowledges into academia. Uh, I know that some, programs, some um, classes are extremely Western focused. They're, um, there's no room for indigenous knowledge in certain classes. And like I brought uh, attention to one class because they were being very disrespectful about the certain type of fish, the Kahawai fish, and they um, the professor kind of like looked like it was like a bait fish and, and it, and we were dissecting the fishes, gutting the fish, but there was no, um, like protocol and honor in that fish. So honoring the indigenous and the Maori knowledge, um, as equal as that Western knowledge. And so moving forward, um, so an example, I've included some links, uh, Laura Grizzly Paw, she works at TRU, the Indigenous Education Developer. She basically indigenizes TRU. So that role should be in all institutions because a lot of institutions need that indigenous knowledge because they're, every institution is on indigenous land and honoring and recognizing the treaties or the sovereignty, um, the inherent rights of those nations is, what the Western academia needs to make sure that they do because indigenous knowledge was here first in the lands that we are all on. So that needs to be honored in academia, especially since our children are learning in schools about how important Maori or Musqueam or tsleil Squamish, all these people are, uh, um, pre deck health, um, all these indigenous people, children are learning in school, but when we come into Western institutions, uh, it's kind of pushed to the side. So 
just making sure that all Indigenous students feel welcome, feel heard, and feel like their voices and their traditions that they've been learning matter, uh, just to prevent that institutional racism and also upholding traditional ecological knowledge as a valid form of knowledge too, because all these Indigenous students coming through will get, um, will have a lot of knowledge that maybe some professors might not have gotten. And so making sure that's held up as well. So I was trying to get through everything fast. I'm, I'll be happy to uh, take any questions. I want to make sure that Flynn, he has some awesome slides too. So I want to make sure I give him room to talk. Uh, so Kiara, Thank you. Uh, kia ora no te um, I'll get through this so we can um, get to the question time, which we know is very important. Um, but yeah, Neo Fukumano to Kia Koto Katoa. Thank you so much for having us today. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so yeah, just as Karamia um, did to give a bit of location, a little bit of awareness, uh, my whakapapa and my genealogy comes from the tail of the fish of the North Island, Ngāpui. And so we kind of just circled the whole area because um, I don't have many tribes around New Zealand, but I have a many um, places and towns and within that area. So yeah, you can see so what you want to about that, but yeah, Ngāpui to the bone. So I am. Kia ora. And so, yeah, for me, why I applied, I uh, wasn't too aware of the program at the start until Karamia um, came and approached and talked to me about it. And I think the biggest and most important aspect was what I study in international business. Um, Mandarin is under there, so you need a language of Māori studies. So my, a lot of my interest is around Indigenous uh, relations internationally. I started to move into a lot of those spaces I want to learn, and it's kind of having that um focus and knowledge that yeah as uh, Christy has said we're not alone and we don't just have our own culture our own people there is a variety of beautiful people beautiful languages and beautiful ind indigeneity all around the world that we can stick together and help build each other up and so that was a lot of the interest towards me um, and yeah I, a lot of what I do is for my uh, for my family for my little siblings um, to get kind of Get show them um, the opportunities that can happen through through hard work and through also um, kind of just taking something that might seem a bit scary. And so for friends and younger students um, coming back, a lot of them have asked me what it is and so hopefully to inspire them to work towards this. But um, along with applying um, a little story Karami and I had was that when she spoke about the kind of financial uh, matters and being away from whānau, um, Fano wasn't a massive thing for me at the start. I was like, oh, yeah, I can do that. Um, but, yeah, getting over there got a bit hard. But initially, the finances was the biggest thing. And I had a friend who one night decided um, that he would go on an exchange, and the next day he had it all organised and booked. And so I was like, man, I was like, Weird, how do you just do that? And so that was a big thing for this, the opportunity to be able to um, financially go overseas to another country just never seemed to be a possibility for me in university. It was always a dream. Um, and so, yeah, that was an amazing part uh, towards what I, why I applied as well. Uh, next slide, please. And yeah, so some big um, amazing things that went well for me was, yeah, having um, in a sense of personal advisor, Karamia in Aotearoa, and then Faye getting over as that two points of contact that I knew that I wasn't alone. Um, I wasn't going through this massive uh, registration process that is, um, it's a big process, as we all know, um, going on exchange. And so having someone to go and talk to, um, someone to sit in the office, um, an OMD especially, and just rant out the things that confused me, um, sit down and have um, that toe talk or that support um, was a massive importance. Um, and then getting there, as I said, the scholarship was a fundamental um, help in uh getting the uh, accommodation and flights. And I think most importantly for me as well was the Indigenous spaces. Um, I've sat on the Māori Student Association here. I spend a lot of my time in the Māori Student Building. I worked for the Māori Pastoral Care. So that little corner of the uni, as uh, Christy will know, is kind of where I spend all of my time. And so to leave that and come over to another country, um, also being, I, did, I, did, I was the only student that went over. Once I got there, I was like, oh, it's like, okay. 
And so I started, yeah, to be able to go to those spaces knowing I could go to the collegium and just sit there amongst um, Indigenous students. And even just sitting there sometimes was all I needed um, to go there for a snack, a quarter or a talk. I'd pop into the residential schools and um, just have a talk to them. That's what I like doing. I'll just invade spaces, um, stop your work and just have a quarter or have a talk. Um, and then the free, uh, free will to learn, I think import the most important thing for me is that the growths out of this um, hui and out of this meeting is to set foundations, but to still allow the students to freely grow in a safe way. And so there was a lot of learnings for me overseas, but the most important thing is I'm back here. I'm alive, I'm safe, I'm health healthy. And so the mistakes that I can make and learnings that I can learn um, are fundamental and so um, important for my growth and for my family, my culture, my people. And so I think that's a really important thing is setting the foundations that were set allowed me to still grow from them and then still find my spaces, find what I wanted to do, find who I wanted to see and meet. So yeah, those are some pretty awesome things. Uh, growths. So the registration process is pretty, pretty intense. Um, but that is just as it is as an international student. Um, I don't really know how that can be um, grown from, but I just think that if I can skip over the exchange outcomes, that can really be tied into that a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with tips and tricks. So really navigating through that registration process. If there was to be a timeline um, of, as I, I think there kind of is, but more so around obviously when things are due and how things work, it kind of can help the students really um, narrow into job to job rather than this huge thing of through visas, uh, um, housing applications, transfer stuff. Um, one-on-one -on -one tips and tricks, a little, a little bit like obviously going to Vancouver um, with the living costs and finances is a, a bit different. The whole world's obviously going through this, but a little bit of a one-on-one -on -one would definitely be an amazing um, help into understanding the costs of over there, um, how to how to save for your personal spending um, through shopping and then yeah, the portal navigation and terminology, that would be a massive help. Um, for us in Otago, we call courses papers. So I sent a, I spent a wee while trying to research UBC papers, um, which led me nowhere, until I realized they were called courses. Um, so that was a funny um, one where I then started learning the terminology um, throughout campus and how the things on your guys' websites work. And so I think that would be an amazing thing for students coming up to know. Um, yeah exchange outcomes i think coming back i've learned a lot into how what i wanted to get out of this exchange um, i want to return um, to vancouver um, but also what can i bring back now um, for my last semester what can i equip help equip these younger students into aspiring for for their whanau for their family and for their people and so maybe goal setting with the students so that they get the most out of, out of the exchange for a variety of what they want reasons. Um, and that could also help to um, really um, assist future funding um, applications if we were to increase um, that um, kind of area. So yeah, along, and I didn't really write it down, but it, it, Christy's it right as well. The, the funding is amazing, but then there's the currency exchange as well um, for me over. So what that turns into can, I think, yeah, maybe would need to grow a little bit with um, inflation. And I think going over a little bit of another a general welcome as well um, to know exactly like who, who to meet outside of um, the Go Global Bay. And so like coming into um, the, the Longhouse and spaces like that in the start would definitely be a massive um, kind of help. But I think what you mentioned, Faye, on the surveys is probably even better because then it allows the students to really know what they want to do. Because I'm a person where I just, I, I'll kick into any space and I love that, I do. And But not every student is going to be the same. And so I think that um, learning the individualism of each student is so important. That's what keeps us Indigenous. Um, we're not just a number, we're not just another data in the system. And so, yeah, understanding who's coming and who they are, their strengths and weaknesses um, really can help make this program uh, work in a lot smarter way rather than um, harder. So, yeah, that's, I think that's my growths. Yeah. But overall, I had an amazing time. I loved it hands down. I made a lot of friends. Um, 
a lot of spaces you really like um it was hurting my heart a little bit Faye, with some of those photos you brought up i was like oh i was like i want to go back but yeah it's an amazing opportunity it's, um i'll never forget it and i'll be back over very very soon hopefully um but yeah if that i think that's everything i have Um, so yeah, kati, um, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, o te rā, uh, kia ora hui hui mai tātou, kia ora Thank you everyone, 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 thank you so much. Thank you all. Um, I know we're at the end of our session, but we've had one question come in. So to what extent are UBC Indigenous students aware of the TPW program and how are UBC Indigenous students selected into the program? Um, yeah, thank you for that question. So um, the program is pretty widely shared. It's um, posted in the Talking Stick, which um, most Indigenous students on campus subscribe to. Um, it's also posted in um, the Critical Indigenous Studies newsletter that goes out. Um, so usually during our recruitment cycle, that's when the posts go out. Um, we share it at at UBC, we have an Indigenous working group that is consists of advisors across all different departments, academic advising, housing, enrollment services. Um, so when we have these types of opportunities, we share them with all those advisors and hope that they share them with the students that they're working with. Um, and so the application process, um, because it is part of a general exchange as well, students have the opportunity to apply um, to the University of Otago as an exchange destination. Um, and then they are essentially applying as well for the funding um, that goes with the TPW program and the cultural components of it. So um, there's a supplemental um, application that we have um, developed based off of what Otago um, uses in their application process, because we really want to make sure that um, that we're following their lead with the values um, that they are looking for from their students, that we are also searching for students who value reciprocity and an exchange of knowledge. So we've tailored a lot of the same application questions to um, our students here. Thank you. I don't see any other questions coming in. So if any of you have any last thoughts that you'd like to share or I will wrap it up from here. <laughs> No. Um, oh, just probably to close okay. off, I just want to thank Christy and Flynn for um, joining this webinar today. Um, I said before that this having students and having their perspectives and having their growths and what, you know, and things that went well um, really allows for us to kind of take this back to our institutions um, to kind of, um, to kind of push um, some of those some of those graphs that you've you've spoken about um so that we can you know further develop this program that can continue to continue to grow um and that um we provide more opportunities for indigenous students and Maori students to to study abroad so I, I really value um the things that have been shared with us today um and just want to thank you both very very much I, I want to say thank you as well to the students. I'm sorry, I'm sorry that the time went so fast. I know you have so much more to share and um, I just really value everything that you bring to this program. And I think, um, and everything that the Office of Maori Development has brought to it, I think it's, it shows in how many times they have come to visit us that it, that, that priority of having face-to-face -face relationships has been one of the reasons why we've, I think, you know, we're not just colleagues, we're friends on this call and um, it's really, it's really special. So um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you for listening. And um, if anyone has any questions outside of this, I'm sure there is a way to find our contact information online. Thank you. And on that note, thank you to Faye, Christy, Karamea, and Flynn for sharing all your insights today and joining us. It was a great session. And thank you to everyone who joined us online. We'd appreciate your feedback. So if you can just take a couple moments when you log off on Zoom and complete the survey, we'd really appreciate it. 
and I wish everyone a great day ahead. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you, Holder. Thank you.